And I want to thank uh, our alumni, our fans, faculty, staff, students, members of the media, and in particular, our student athlete football guys for coming out and helping us welcome Coach Lamb to the Bear family today. Oh, here we go. Housekeeping, just to kind of let you know how today's going to go, you're going to hear from our president, our athletic director, and then coach. Uh, following that, we will open it up for questions, so hold anything to the end, uh, and we'll just go from there. So, to get it started, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce President Andy Feinstein. Thanks, David. How's everyone doing out there? We happy? Well, today is a great day to be a UNC Bear. And it is my pleasure to be among the first to welcome and thank Coach Lamb and his family for choosing to join Bear Country. Let's give Coach Lamb a big round of applause. You know, this weekend I had a chance to spend several hours with Ed and his wife Sarah. And these are wonderful people, and I'm certain they're really going to fit in right here in Greeley. Thank you to the student athletes faculty, staff, and community members who are with us today. And a special shout out to Arlo Richardson, Chris, and his family for their hospitality. Thank you, folks. Give them a big round of applause, too. I want to thank all of you for supporting and believing in UNC football and the young men who are proud to wear a Bears jersey. Our collective support is critical to the future of this program. And I believe this support is grounded in a shared commitment to student success. That commitment is core to UNC's mission and is written into our strategic plan. We know that it takes everyone of us working together for our student athletes to achieve success in the classroom and in competition. So coach, I'm excited and eager to begin working with you and our athletic director, Darren Dunn, to build the future of UNC's football program, but more importantly, to build and support our student athletes. I know you share our commitment and desire to support our student athletes as individuals and as a team, and thank you for that. I also know that you share our commitment to strengthening relationships with our local community, our fans, our alumni, our donors, parents, and friends who are proud to support our student athletes every season. As of today, I think we are all eagerly awaiting some spring ball and our first home game on September 9th with new optimism and a heightened level of excitement. So I'm now going to turn the conversation over to our athletic director, Darren Dunn, who's going to introduce our new head football coach, Coach Ed Lamb. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Welcome, and thank you all for being here. <clears throat> Today is a great day. I'm super excited, and I hope you all are as well. I feel great about our search process and the interest we had in our position. It's been a lot of work over the past couple of weeks, but I really appreciate so many people that have helped us identify and, and attract this great coach. I would like to, say, I would like to thank a few people First, our search committee, Cedric Howard, Rachel Walton, David Sobolchik, and our uh, consulting firm, Car Sports. I really appreciate the time they put into this. Thank you. I, I probably owe you a couple weekends at Thanksgiving, so thank you all. I really appreciate your time. I'd also like to thank so many coaches and administrators who have helped us on this national search. I would like to thank also Andy and Carrie Feinstein for their support and involvement throughout this process. So thank you very much. I'd also like to thank our assistant football coaches and our interim head coach, Scott Darnell, for caring and supporting our football student athletes during this year, but also throughout this transition. And finally, I'd like to thank our football student athletes who served on our committee and the entire team for their patience, their support, and most importantly, the trust that they provided us throughout this process. <clears throat> yep, absolutely. Thanks, guys. 
When we met with the Student Athlete Committee about two weeks ago, they helped provide us with key traits that they would like to see in our next head coach, such as authenticity, an ability to connect and truly care for our team, a person with a clear plan, a person who knows how to win the Big Sky Conference, a good man of character who will help prepare these young men for life. Our committee, we also looked at several key factors. A coach who had a vision for our team. A good manager of people. A person who can lead our football program. And finally, a clear plan on how to connect to Colorado high school coaches and our future recruits. We have talked to many coaches at all levels in Colorado, the region, and nationally and there was one clear per person who stood out to our committee. Coach Lamb was a clear choice for us. I have followed his career closely since we met at a Big Sky event in 2015. He's had tremendous success at multiple universities. University of San Diego, Southern Utah University, and most recently Brigham Young University. But what really stood out to me is how he treated and truly cared for his teams. How he built student athletes into young men. And how Coach Lamb and his family have always embraced the communities in which they lived. When I met with the football team yesterday, I told them how excited I was for them and their future. But I'm also excited about our university and our community with Coach Lamb being in it. Coach Lamb and his wonderful family are a great fit for UNC and Greeley. And now I am really proud to introduce our new head football coach, Ed Lamb. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being here. I don't know if, if this is a particularly large crowd for an event like this and, and don't really care, but my hope is that in, um, in a few years we'll be able to look back together and you'll say, yeah, I was there. And uh, I'll say thank you for being there and seeing some potential in, uh, in what we're trying to accomplish here. I want to, um, I too need to thank a lot of people. Uh, number one, Darren uh, Dunn for taking the phone call. Uh, there were, coaching searches are the worst kept secrets in our industry. We immediately know as coaches who's involved, who's being interviewed, uh, who got their first call accepted, who has a chance, and then you know all the way down the line, who's there, who's on campus, and I know the names that, um, that Darren had uh, at his disposal, guys that he was talking to, qualified coaches, personal friends, guys who have all of the skills needed to be successful here as, as the head football coach. So I'm humbled that, uh, that he sees me as the right guy going forward. And I wanna thank um, President Andy Feinstein. It was within a few minutes that I could clearly see when we met that he understands the link between a healthy campus and a healthy football team. And uh, all apologies to those universities or colleges that don't have football, but I don't know how one can exist without the other. Athletics in general, but uh, particularly a football program, the potential for positive energy in the community that a football program can generate, and because of the sheer number of young men that are highly competitive, the potential damage that they can do to a campus and a community. And that's a stewardship that I take very seriously, and uh, thank you boys for being here. I want to thank the committee uh, as well. Uh, Mike Sobolchik has taken me under his wing the last few days, and um, it kind of at times just you know, pushed me around. I didn't know where I was going. Everything kind of looks the same there in the in the athletic department offices, um, and uh, he has showed me where I need to be, what time I need to be there, and he's been the link really with every meeting that I've had and some really productive meetings in a, in a 48 hour period here that I think have set the groundwork for what we want to accomplish. Uh, Rachel, where's Rachel? There's not 
too many times when I meet someone and see the same intensity staring me back in the eyes. <laughs> She's a bulldog and she missed her calling. She should have been a football coach. And we've already made, made progress because um, she cares about these boys. She cares about the team. And, and most importantly, um, you know, she's a direct communicator, and I speak that language, so thank you. Um, Cedric Howard um, it became immediately clear to me that he is intimately involved in the lives, the day-to-day -day life, the minute-by-minute -minute way that our players and students uh, move around campus, what they, what they eat, what they do, what they see, how they feel, and um, that also is my language. That also is what I, I like to say I geek out on that stuff. So I've got, a, I know I have a partner in him and that we can, uh, we can develop these guys in a way that uh, transcends their daily life and life beyond the university level. I got to thank the home team. They're, they're back now. Sarah came out with me for a couple of days and uh, my wife Sarah and, and we had a great time and, and met a lot of people um, during that time. Uh, that we look forward to getting to know better. It was kind of a whirlwind, but she's back home now taking care of our three daughters. Two of them are adults um, already, um, so I don't, but we, we have a close family. We've got a sign, change is hard. We've got a sign at our home that says home is where we are. They're with me again. <laughs> they're, they're, uh, they're up for a new challenge, and I uh, thank them for that. Three daughters, one boy. Um, along the lines of that, uh, taking care of that home team, I see Steve Baker here. Thank you for being here. He's, he's uh, helped us tremendously and, and went up above and beyond with how much time he's already spent with us and trying to find us a place to live. We've got a tradition in our family. We've moved, we've moved a lot with this profession. And every time, even though we know it's a possibility that we may move on someday, be asked to move on or, or get a different opportunity, we plan on staying. So... We purchase a home in town as close as we can. We plant asparagus. If any of you know about asparagus, you can't harvest it until three years later. And again, you know, this is not something I read on Twitter or Instagram. This is real. I will show you my asparagus <laughs> at every house that I've been to. Um, it's, it, to me, uh, putting down roots and being a part of the community for me and my family is critical moving forward. Also, the I want to thank Tyler Richardson. We have a special needs son who I'm anxious for our players to meet, um, to learn more about uh, those, those type of challenges that exist for the parents and for those type of uh, kids. And Tyler Richardson has really helped um, give us um, some early resources to look at and made us feel comfortable that we can do that with the challenges that exist in our family here. And the whole Richardson family has been kind and, and reached out. I can't believe I met so many of them in such a short uh, period of time. So, so thank you for that. And thank you for raising a great family. Um, I've heard it a few times now over the last few days that, uh, you know, Coach Lamb has won a, a Big Sky Championship or, or won this championship, that won this or that. And you know, I appreciate that. And I recognize what people are saying, but it was the players that won it. I want to thank my former players. I never step foot on a, on a football field, um, well, at least I shouldn't, uh, but I'm certainly, not, I'm certainly not an active participant in any of the plays, and um, those former players have made me now at several stops look better than I really am, and I expect you guys to do the same for me. <laughs> our, um, I'm going to call them our current staff. I haven't hired anybody right now. Right now it's me, and it's all the guys that are working, and they're there. Uh, early in the morning and they're there late at night and they're taking care of the boys on the team they're taking care of the business at hand they're still actively recruiting I've met with each of them already they understand the business there um, there's got to be change the players deserve change uh, there's change as a part of this business and uh, you know my family's going through it and a lot of their families are going to go through it those, that's probably the hardest thing for me right now is, is working through that because that's a competent group of really hardworking men who most importantly, they care about uh, our players. They care about this team. They care about the things you care about. And uh, it's a results-based uh, business. They, they um, well understand the nature of the business, but um, I want to thank them for their work. 
I want to thank the current roster. A bunch of the guys showed up last night. It was a thrill for me to speak to them and to feel the energy back from them. When I talked about uh, the day-to-day -day process and how we intend to do things and our plan to be successful. Uh, to this group, spread the word for us. The mission is clear. Multiple championships. That's an audacious goal. It was an audacious goal when I said it at um, Southern Utah, a school that had never won a championship in its Division I history. We won our first one in year three, got invited to a bigger conference, and won that two years later. It, the championships mean nothing if we don't contribute to this, this community in a first-class way. And so if, if our guys haven't made that connection, then the corrections will be made. We will win with first-class citizens. We will elevate this community through our football efforts. And, and my ultimate goal is to change the way a community sees football. And I don't, I don't mean that in a disparaging way. I don't, I don't know. There's no way for me to know how people see football in this community. But I know that uh, success has been hard to come by in recent days. And I want to change that, uh, the way that people see it. I want to change the way people see our players and our players' ability to contribute to a community. And I promise to do that. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna open it up to questions uh, now from members of the media or anybody. Uh, if you are in the media, either way, please identify who you are. And if you're with a media source, please identify what media source, as well as who your question is directed to. Uh, anybody up here except for me is fair game, so. <laughs> questions? Ed, I wanna ask, oh. Why drop t back down to FCS? You were at a group of five, and, and it was moving to a to the Power Five level. You know, what made you want this job? Oh, thank you for that question. Um, I had actually been pursuing head coaching jobs for the last several years. I enjoyed my time at BYU very much. It's my alma mater. I felt like we were on a uh, excellent upward trajectory, and of course, uh, you know, the players is is that's the reason I'm in this business, but. Um, you know, when I was hired, um, I was hired to help the head football coach become a head football coach. He was a first-time head football coach. We were uh, teammates. We played together. We bled together. We sweated together many years ago, and we had a, a, a tremendously close relationship that was unusual in college football. The daily schedule was mine. The, uh, the systems of the way that we did things were mine, at least early on. And over the years, of course, he's become uh, more competent, more confident in his abilities, and they became his again. And I started to get very hungry for my opportunity to make a direct impact on the lives of young people. Coach Brady Hull, uh, KFK flagship station for the Bears. And uh, you talked about talking to current coaching staff members. Are there are there guys that are sticking out to you? Can, can we expect a couple of names from that, from that list that might stick with you? Oh, yeah, fair question, um, and, I, and I appreciate it. Uh, the, to, be, to be honest, it, it, it may sound a little like I'm dodging the question. They, I've been impressed with all of them, and of course, they're, uh, they're, they're on their best behavior right now, <laughs> but <laughs> I feel it's genuine. Uh, I, I feel it in, in the questions that I ask, I feel there's a genuine, care for the future of this place. And you just, any of you that have been involved in sports, I, I imagine most of you have been, and that's why you're here, why you have interest tonight in supporting. Um, that's, just, that's just how things go when you're a part of something and you're, you're building and you're working hard and, and things don't work out the way that you planned. Um, there, it hurts inside and you want things to get better in whatever way that they need to get better. And I felt that from all of the guys on the staff that I, that I spoke with. It will be a lot more to, to more directly answer your question. The, uh, any, any coaches that I, that I can keep, it will be a lot more about how they fit with um, the guys that I've come up with. In this business, we all have, we all keep a list all the time. Our, our friends in the business, our mentors in the business, uh, our mentors, uh, young coaches that they're working with and that they recommend. And so we all have a list when we get our head coaching job of who we're calling and, uh, and how we see that, that staff shaping up. 
Uh, we've always talked about getting the band back together from Southern Utah. And, uh, you know, I hope that some of those guys will be able to join me. Or, you know, a lot of them are off doing uh, their own things. A lot of, some of them are head coaches now at the FCS level. And so uh, proud of what they're doing, but there could be some opportunities that way. And, uh, you know, I expect to have um, some, some word on that very quickly. So keep reaching out to me. Thanks. Hey, Coach Aaron Rath, uh, the color commentator on 1310 KFKA for football. And I saw on your, your speech to the players, you talked about the transfer portal and that you wanted to keep them off the transfer portal. Have you had a chance to reach out to, or do you plan to reach out to those that have already hit the portal and see if you can bring them back? Absolutely. Yeah, we're, uh, you know, I, um, I promised the players that uh, our responsibility um, as, as a staff and that I would model the way is to see the potential in every player on the roster. If they were here, they were here for a reason, and they have potential. Uh, we'll have standards and um, you know standards of ability, standards of performance on and off the field. And not everybody will be a right fit, but everybody gets a clean slate. And I, I made it clear to the team that anybody that uh, wants to continue to be here and is in good academic standing and good citizenship standing, that they've got a fresh fresh slate with me and I, and I want them to be here. I want people um, in the program that have ex experienced both good times and bad and frustrations and I can learn from them, try to uh, try to make things better when that's the appropriate response. And so uh, specifically, I, I haven't reached out to anyone other than the, the boys that were there. There were one, one player that came up after, I think maybe actually two that said they, they had entered into the portal, they were excited about what they were hearing, and they were going to come out of the portal and stick around. Thanks. Uh, this one, Tanner Schwent, KFK Radio as well. We brought the whole staff down for you, Coach. But uh, 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 this one's for Darren. Uh, Darren, you heard uh, Coach talking about his asparagus and the community and how he wants to be entrenched. How much of that played a role in the decision of selecting uh, Coach Lamb here as the uh, next head coach of the UNC Bears football program? It, it did. Um, and, and that is important that you want to hire someone that wants to embrace the community because that's critical. But those weren't the most important things to me. You know, I saw how he cared about his former teams and how he developed them on and off the field and how he talked about them. I mean, he is a father figure for all of those guys that he's coached on, from BYU to Southern to San Diego. <clears throat> and and I, I think that's really what stood out to me more than anything. Um, also, his uh, being familiar with the Big Sky Conference was something that we talked about a lot in our committee meetings, uh, and, and obviously his success and his plan. I think that's what stood out to me is he has a clear plan on how he's going to approach today through the end of the next season. And that's what really will excite me to see him go through that. And I know it's going to be exciting for our football team. Coach, after uh, this one's for you, Coach, uh, went back and watched a video I found on, on YouTube about your family, the horses. And obviously, I mean, I, I was moved by just watching that. Um, can you just talk to us a little bit about what your family means to you and all these decisions that you're making going forward? Sure. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, um, I grew up, you know, kind of a, a city kid, you know, in the suburbs, I, I should say, not, not the inner city or anything like that. But I was I was in the suburbs um, and didn't know anything about agricultural life or or uh, horses or anything like that. And when um, COVID hit, uh, they kicked us off campus at BYU. We weren't allowed to even even step foot on campus for quite some time. And um, about a year before that, we were recruiting a player uh, named uh, Tyler Batty, and his dad showed up in full cowboy gear. And uh, to me, it looked like a costume. And after I got to know him and laughing with him a little bit, I said, hey, you, you look like you're in a, a costume, you know? And he uh, very sternly explained to me the utility of a pearl snap. And the reason to wear shaps um, or, or and or chinks and uh, and all of that every uh, every part of an outfit 
of cowboy wear was for a specific reason, and he gave me those examples. And so I was just really taken by um, his level of detail. Again, it was like looking in the mirror, like this guy's not a football coach, but this guy's a horse coach, and so he's a horse trainer. And so I called him up and said, hey, can I get down? Uh, we, we, we can't do anything right now. I'm bored. Can you come down? I just want to come down. Let's build fence, lay irrigation, tell me how to, how to do this thing. So I started going down there, and then he, he found out about my son, and I didn't think my son would be able to do it. Uh, but he invited, he said, he said, this will change your, your son's life. And uh, so I brought my son down. The first couple of times we took him, we had to strap him in. We had to strap his feet into the stirrups. We had to put a belt around his waist. We weren't sure that he would stay on or be interested in staying on. And within a few weeks, uh, he was riding with no hands and uh, up and down the steep stuff, big smiles, and it just it changes his uh, demeanor. I've got a 12-year-old um, nonverbal autistic son. Um, He's, uh, there are tremendous challenges in raising him, things that if somebody would have told me before we had him or when I was, you know, these boys' age, it would have been horrifying um, to think of the reality. And, you know, now that it's a part of my daily life, I wouldn't, wouldn't change a thing about it. It's just, it's just the way it is for us. So I'm anxious for, for people to get to know him and, and uh, see him around the community. So we're, we've got three horses, and uh, we're, um, I've got two daughters in particular that that really enjoy it uh riding with him i enjoy riding with my son and uh, we're looking for a spot to to a way to bring those horses here and continue that life well you look like a natural i thought you've been doing it for for <laughs> several years um coach on the x's and o's you know can you talk to us a little bit about your philosophy what that looks like offensively defensively you know things like that sure um well one thing that's really important to me i i think that the, the game sometimes nowadays in college football, especially big time college football, I, I see um, there's, there's a lot of segmentation. I, I think you have um, specialist offense, defense, special teams, quarters, that, uh, coaches that kind of come and go. And, and with them, their systems come and go and there's not continuity for the players. Uh, continuity will be the most important thing for me here. These will be I'll rely on my assistants. I can't do it all myself, but this will be my system of offense, my system of defense, my system of special teams. I've worked in all three phases at all, at all levels of college football, and, um, and and there will be continuity. There's, you know, I want to be clear, there's there's game-to-game -game changes and adjustments necessary. Uh, game planning is a real thing, um, but there will be continuity. Players will be able to come back year after year and, and uh, build upon the training that they've had in previous years. Offensively, we will be uh, an early uh, and long attack throw team. By early, I mean early downs, early in the game. We, we will stretch the defense um, early and uh, get them on their heels and establish the run game uh, when they, um, after we can establish the pass game. But uh, by, by the end of the game, we expect to be balanced and uh, we'll insist on that at times. We have no interest and uh, one of the things that I see teams making a lot of mistakes with right now is, you know, the, the idea of just uh, just scoring as much as you can or just establishing a passing offense or a running offense as much as you can. And teams are not playing together. It's not complementary football. There's not an understanding of how the rush offense and the pass offense work together to protect the defense and give your team a chance to win. And so there's times that when, uh, you know, if anybody – uh, I'll just say it already. I'm going to run it up the middle sometimes. So, yeah. Why does he run it up the middle? I'm not telling you why right now. Just know you aren't showing any particular insight when you say, why does he keep running up the middle? We're going to do that. Uh, defensively, it starts with, with me. It starts like I call it the one, two, threes. I explained this to the players last night. Cover one, uh, you know, kind of across the nation, ubiquitous language. Cover one is man to man coverage. And so we need to recruit and develop so that we can match up man to man. There is no other good defense to call on third and three because zone coverages tend to, you know, give up the check down pass almost on purpose. And so we're going we're gonna to be able to match up. We're going to be able to challenge, turn our defensive line loose on the quarterback. You can't play man-to-man -man coverage all day, especially with today's tempo offenses. Guys get worn out. It's very tiring. We will be in shape. We will be able to play as much as possible. We've got to mix in the zones. And generally, we want to get more aggressive as uh, in our zones and one more fire zones, the, the, more, uh, the more the opponent gets kind of condensed or shows their hand and their tells when they want to run the ball more or, or go more max protection play action. And then, 
it, with the special teams, I believe in a simple sound system of special teams that all players can contribute to. We, uh, we're going to be um, very consistent in those phases of the game, but also very predictable, which you know, leads to some disadvantages in the game, but it leads for advantages with our personnel. And we'll be able to play all players at all times and all the special teams. This is not, our special teams won't be something that the scrubs play on or the, you know, the second teamers. Our very best players will be on all phases of the special teams. Coach, you said your ultimate goal is to win uh, multiple championships uh, here with UNC. What is on the uh, the top of your list when you look at this program? What's uh, you know objective number one to get this program there? Uh, yeah, it's, it, there's there's no other way to do it. I told the players last night when you when you build something, it starts with. Uh, you know, a lot of people think it starts with the foundation, but before the foundation is the dirt work. We're going to get in and, and do the dirt work um, early, and that's just that's just good old-fashioned hard work. I promised them that we would be the hardest working team in America. I acknowledge that there's no way to measure that. We, we don't know exactly what other people are doing, but we've got to be able to look each other in the eye. We've got to be able to look in the mirror and determine if we really believe that we are the hardest working team in America. A lot of uh, the players' eyes got kind of big at that point and saw some guys maybe thinking about the, the transfer portal. And I promised them that everything that they did uh, through January and February in preparation for spring practice, that I would do it as well. I'll be at every workout. I'll lift every weight that they lift. I'll, every, every step that they run, I'll be running as well. Yes. Hi, Coach Lamb. First off, welcome to UNC. Patricia Hartley from the Office of Greek Life here at the University of Northern Colorado. I'm coming with a message directly from our students. So our students love coming to the games. They love supporting. Um, and they also want representation on the field. That's also them as well. So one of the things that I'm here to let you know is that a while fraternity and sorority life um, comes out to support the games. And I know that football already has that sense of belonging there. I want football players to also know there's a place for them as well in fraternity and sorority life. Thank, Thank you. you. So you talked about building trust with the team. Um, what are practical like plans to do that? How how do you how do you plan to specifically act that out? Oh, what a great question! Um, it only come trust is only built through sincerity, authenticity, and there can be no plan other than to be real with the players. It's going to come up. Um, in moments unexpected, in conversations unexpected, in situations unscripted, uh, where I get a chance to show that I'm a listener, that I care about the players, and um, anybody that, that would suggest to me that I should have a plan in order to build trust, I would say that's an insincere way to do it. Thanks for the question. Coach Blake Olson, I'm a play-by-play -play announcer for KFK. Welcome to Greeley in Northern Colorado. Thank you. Um, how much video of David Hogue have you watched? <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I, know that, I know that he's a, a fantastic player. He showed a lot of his leadership qualities last night in our team meeting. He wasn't afraid to speak up. He spoke up about something I'm very passionate about, which is nutrition. Um, I can't ask the players to work as hard as I'm going to ask them to work without making sure that they have calories to put in their mouth hole. And so it's an area that we've already talked about as a leadership staff up here. And, uh, and David, David brought that up. So I, I, I know what a talent he is. I've, I've seen that. I know what his abilities are. And I think you know, most importantly, um, he, can, he can raise the level of the guys around him. I've seen that in him. You also said uh, to the team that you, you had watched their games, the video, obviously, and studied them. And they're, they're so close. What are they lacking, in your opinion? I mean, in a nutshell. Yeah, I, it's, it's a, little bit, a little bit difficult because I think each game uh, is different. And, and that's sometimes the case when, when teams uh, start to lose. We went on a, a, a very uncharacteristic losing streak four games here at BYU this year. And the thing about losing in the sport of football, because there's so much on the line, there's so much work that's put in for so few competitions that 
everything that, that you thought you believed in as a player or as a coach or as a play caller, it's suddenly it's in doubt. We begin to doubt ourselves. And then so you can see a team that really tries to establish one phase of the game, to, to simplify it, the example, to, simplify, to uh, emphasize the rush game. When we've got to establish the run, you know, that, that was our problem last week. And then all of a sudden, oh, we can't get to the passer. You know, it's a new problem the, the week after. But I think that uh, for, that some of the, the things that I saw last year was a team that, um, you know, hung close for a long time. And that's an indication that the, the talent is there. That's an indication that the coaches were working hard to put the players in the right position. And then belief, you know, can just a lack of belief can just kind of creep in at the wrong moment late in the game. And then and then one of the things that happens to divide a team that I thought unfortunately um, happened and, and happened to the team I was coaching last year. And so I don't I don't mean this to be a critical way, um, but I think that, that sometimes you know late in the game when the when the opponent kind of has the game in hand and and the substitutions start coming in and then you know maybe the offense puts on a couple of late scores it makes the defense look like they had faltered in a way that um, you know you know if, well if we just would have hold them to this score we could have got there and that's probably not the real story the real story is probably about the end of the third quarter what was the score that's the competitiveness of the game that's what I saw over and over is some pretty close games with with a chance to win there at the end of the third quarter and as the game went on you know doubt crept in How you doing, Coach? Angel Padilla. I'm also with KFKA. Uh, recent graduate from UNC as well, so I can kind of speak from the student's perspective. Uh, with a program that hasn't seen you know, a lot of winning success and a winning culture, how do you plan on creating that winning culture but also fostering it for the next generation of Bears that will come in under your tutelage? Um, it, you know, it's really going to just be based on, on work. Uh, I, I, I'm a, uh, really, I'm a one-trick pony in terms of uh, flipping football teams. And that is, I want these guys, when game day shows up, that they've worked so incredibly hard and believe that they've worked so incredibly hard that there's no motivational speech by me that's going to make a difference in that game. Uh, there's no amount of adversity in the game that's going to make them quit. It is um, everything, all of the frustration, all of the work, all of the pride that has been built up over the course of the rest of the year comes out on game day and uh you know it, it doesn't it doesn't work 100 percent of the time and there are a lot of other efforts that that you know as, as coaches will be making behind the scene to put the guys in the right um in the right techniques and in the right strategies i don't i don't mean to minimize all that but in the end there's no there's no team that i've been a part of where i've played a significant role in the culture that we've built that just you know, if you talk to any of my former players, it just boils down to he just pushed us so damn hard. That's what I promised to do. Coach, last one for me, I promise, for now. Yeah. Um, you said you're going to run with them and lift. Are we talking, like, the exact same amount of running, same weight, all that stuff? You're a buff guy, but what, what are we talking about here? The, uh, yeah, the, so the exact same number of reps, <laughs> the, <laughs> the exact same number of yards, yeah. And uh, yeah, any any player that I'm lifting more weights than, and then I'm running faster than, we'll hear about it. That's that's part of the culture. Is you know, your minimum standard is to get ahead of me. Yeah. All right, last one for me too, and I'm going kind of in that same direction. You said you grow asparagus. Yeah. You didn't say if you were any good at it. How's your asparagus crop once it gets up and going, Coach? You any good at it? Uh, yeah. Well, okay. Um, yes. Yeah. I, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. And, and, and I research it. So this, this past, uh, this past year, I, I mounted it up such that we could harvest it as white asparagus, which is where you, 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 you have to dig down and a little more tender, uh, variety than, a, than an asparagus that you let green up on top of the ground. So like, yeah, I know what I'm doing, but then also we, we thought it would be a really good idea for our son if we got a dog and uh, that uh, he would be like a buddy. And it, it hasn't exactly worked out that way. It, he's, a, he's a fine dog, he's a good dog, but he also likes asparagus. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little bit of a sore spot for me right now because we didn't get as much as we should have. Well, he, he has an ag show in the morning, so you can, anything you need to know about it, they, they, they have it. Um, one other question for me. Uh, 
a few miles away from here a couple days ago, uh, Deion Sanders had his, has, had his press conference. So I've, I've had a lot of correspondence with coaches, high school football coaches in Colorado, concerned about those players in Colorado that are going to be overlooked. What would you say to the, the guys from Cherry Creek, Fort Morgan, Pueblo, Palmer Ridge, here in Colorado that would uh, would consider, hadn't thought about the Bears before now. Sure. Um, I, I can make a promise in that regard. You know, overlooked can, can mean a few different things, and sometimes that's just a difference of evaluation, but every player in the state will be evaluated. Every coach will know uh, which of our coaches is responsible to be at their school. We will be at their school. We will be in their doors. Uh, we, uh, we want to invite um, not just the prospects to campus, but the teams. We want to get our summer camp going, which is a great evaluation opportunity um, for for the young players. And we want to expose, you know, not every player on a high school football team that comes to camp is a, is a prospect or wants to be a college football prospect, but they're all prospective students at this university. And we want to do a great job with that football camp of exposing what we have here. Any additional questions before we close? Well, again, thank you for all taking the time, making the time to come out and uh, help welcome Coach Lamb to the Bear family. Uh, he will stick around and meet a few people here, and then we're going to do some pictures. But thank you very much for being here. Happy holidays, and go Bears.